Welcome to the Bullpen uh, Mentors video series where we talk all things with industry leaders about personal finance. Uh, my name is Haven Coleman and I am so excited to be joined um, by author, international speaker, consultant, and coach Tony Bridwell. <laughs> Tony, thank you so much for joining us today. We're so excited to have you on. It is a pleasure to be here. Oh, yes. We're so excited you were able to join us today. So <laughs> we wanted to start out. Your accomplishments are really so numerous. I could probably spend the entire podcast just going over them, uh, but I wanted to just tell, I wondered if you could just tell our viewers just a little bit about yourself and your background, kind of what you're doing now, and maybe give us an idea of what led you to, to this profession. It's interesting. I never set out in school to end up where I am today, really? which is pretty interesting, right? Uh, today, I'm the chief talent officer for the Encompass Group, okay. which is a, um, an international HR people um, organization. Okay. So we provide solutions uh, for organizations to meet all their people needs, okay, whether it's cool. talent acquisition, technology, or workplace transformation. Very nice. I have the privilege of leading the workplace transformation division of, wow. of the organization. Okay. Um, and so, you know, if you go back prior to this, I was the chief people officer uh, for Brinker International mm -hmm. based here in Dallas, Texas, okay. which owns Chili's and Maggiano's. Oh, that's awesome. Um, and then also chief people officer for Ryan LLC, which right. nobody knows who Ryan LLC <laughs> is, uh, but they are the largest um, global tax consulting firm oh, wow. really on the planet. So they, they run everything basically. <laughs> they basically do, yes. Uh, and you know, at, at Brinker I had 60,000 people I was responsible wow. for. At okay. Ryan it was a little bit smaller footprint, only okay. 3,300 people yeah. in 14 countries. Wow. Um, but prior to that I was a senior partner in a consulting firm and prior to that I was an architect. Wow, how cool. So, uh, you know, I studied architecture, theology, and business. Interesting, okay. In school. Very interesting. Very and cool. I end up as a chief talent officer. Yeah, that's incredible. Just kind of. It's I've, the swiggly line. <laughs> absolutely, but I'm sure that, that just prepared you to do the accomplishments. Okay, so that's a, that's, that's a, very, that's a very interesting point. If you look back and in, in, at everything that I've done up to this point, it's absolutely prepared me to do what I'm doing. Right. But I never set out to say, okay, I'm going to do this in order to do that. Right. It just kind of evolved along the way. Yeah, absolutely. I was going to say, it's crazy kind of how our careers can prepare us, no matter how, if you're switching industries and things like that, it can prepare us to do what we're doing and our passion and things like that. Yes. So, well, I'm so curious. Cool. Did you change majors at all in school? I did, so yes. So that uh, makes you normal. <laughs> totally, yeah. Apparently it's like 2.4 times. Oh my gosh, yes, totally. I changed, so I changed twice. There uh, you go. So that's the, Look, pretty much the, the average. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and you gotta ask, why do you think that is? I mean, yeah. I know this is your podcast. So, so oh I'm, yeah, I'm, no, you're, yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> but it is, I mean, you have to ask, you know, why? is that and when we start talking about the marketplace and what we're doing right i think sometimes we get into something and we just don't know absolutely well, my daughter yeah. started off as an interior designer she wow. gets a degree in marketing yep but now she's a world famous artist okay oh, that's so interesting yeah i know it that's and but one per helped her with the other and the other helped her with this right and now she's doing something completely different wow yeah that's fascinating yeah because i started out in international business went to marketing and now management and then now i'm doing sales and content creation so it's just really there's interesting kind of i kind think of there's pathway. a lesson to be learned in all of that absolutely yeah, yeah. i'm excited to, to talk more about the lesson as we kind of continue but i wanted to kind of start out with saying so i know that one of your passions is really just talking to young people kind of like yep. you were saying um about leadership and kind of the stories yeah. that we can start to tell ourselves as we enter into the workplace for the yeah. first time. Um, so as a college student, I actually had the opportunity to hear you speak in one of my management courses at Texas A&M, and I just remember how impactful it was to me. I feel like um, there should be a then. whoop put in there. <laughs> just because You can't say Texas A&M and not have a whoop That's at some true. Point. Whoop. Uh, yeah, uh, got whoop. my Aggie okay, right on today. Yeah. But yeah. I was going to say, um, but I was going to say, yeah, just incredibly impactful. But So why would you say that you're passionate about speaking to the next generation, Gen Z, about entering into the workplace? And what advice may, do you usually try to give them in yeah. these classes where you go and speak? Like, what would you say is the most important thing that you would say to uh, Gen Z as they're entering into the modern workplace post pandemic and things like yeah, that? Yeah, it's a really, really good question. And and I, I do have a passion. And I, th I think some of that came from seeing my own kids come up, um, come out of school, and then, you know, having breakfast with my daughter one day and her saying, Dad, I have a marketing degree. I can't seem to find a job in marketing. Right. Uh, you know, what do I do? Right. And, you know, it, it can be very confusing because 
at times what we do is we try to squeeze everybody into this box that says, yep. okay, you're getting a degree in international business and so, or international marketing, and so therefore you're going to have to go find something that says international, international. marketing in yep. it. And all of a sudden we get squeezed into this box and when we can't find it, what happens? We become very, very right. frustrated and we're thinking, okay, I have failed mm -hmm. at what I'm doing. I've wasted all that time. I've wasted all that energy. And my own daughter was having uh, you know, this same moment, this crisis of belief to where she had this degree in marketing. Uh, she was interviewing in all these jobs. She would always end up being the number two person. Wow. You know, she'd get the call and say, man, Allie, you were so close. You were our oh, number two pick. Just didn't gosh. work out this time. Right. Um, and we were having breakfast one morning and she was like, dad, I, I just don't know what to do. Yeah. And I said, well, what do you want to do right now? She says, I just need some time to clear my head. And I think I just want to take a class and just kind of, yeah. just kind of clear my head. I'm like, okay, what do you want to do? I think I'm going to take a calligraphy class. Well, okay. okay. <laughs> and I'm, well, all right. Well, let's take calligraphy class. From that calligraphy class, uh, five years later now, she is um, an international best-selling author. She has, uh, she's a world-famous muralist and artist. Really? She has her own How business. Um, she has multiple product lines, a fabric line, oh a wallpaper gosh. line. Um, and she leverages her marketing degree mm. every single day. Right. Um, but it was, it was something that what she discovered along the way is that she found what she really was good at. Yeah. And then she leaned into that. Wow. And so for me, as a recovering chief <laughs> people officer, right, head, right. Of, head of HR basically uh, for some global organizations, uh, you know, we would hire people right out of school right. and many of them we discovered weren't really well prepared mm. or felt discouraged Really, coming into the marketplace like I had no idea. Right. And so part of my own passion for speaking, um, you know, as many schools as I can and next next year I'm going to adjunct at one of the universities here in Dallas. Oh, how cool. It is to to teach some of what's missing, to, to give students a little bit of an inside um, peek. Right. Say, okay, hey, look, it's going to feel different. Yep. What you're learning here <laughs> is going to feel a little different. Yeah, absolutely. Let me give you some insight on how you can navigate through that right. and not be overwhelmed. Right, right. I've, I was going to say, I totally hear what you're saying. Sometimes education can make you think it's like going to be a cookie cutter job. Yes, right. And the real world is totally not like that. You can work the same job at five different companies and have a wildly different yes, experience. And yes. So that's, that's super Or five valuable. different jobs in the same company. Right. And have a wildly, so yes, you're absolutely, you're absolutely correct. That's and perfect. while the education system is oh. just doing their darndest yeah. to help, right. um, sometimes there is a pretty substantial disconnect yeah. between school and the real world. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm so glad we have people like you to help us yeah. <laughs> understand that. That's that's super helpful. And so, um, as you know, Mentoro is a financial education company. So we work with people from all walks of life who um, and kind of help them take steps towards their financial health overall, and not just kind of wealth. So we, we find a lot of people focus on that wealth piece, um, yep. and not necessarily the health <laughs> piece. And so um, there is a huge correlation in the careers that we take on, um, just kind of between how that impacts our financial financial and overall health mm -hmm. often. So I was wondering if you could provide any insight to someone who might be experiencing some pressures from society that says like, you know, having a job is really just all about making money. You kind of just have to get to that financial security, financial space that you, you want. And that's really all you're supposed to be doing is. So when you're looking for a job, you know, what advice would you have for someone who's struggling with this concept? This is a brilliant question. Um, too often we try to put um, these components of life in buckets, yeah. right? I got my financial bucket, I'll worry about that tomorrow. I've right. got this work bucket, I'll worry about that today. I've got my personal life bucket, whatever the case may be. Right. And right. in reality, um, what, what we try to help people understand is um, it's really about looking at your overall well-being. Yes. Okay, yeah. and, and part of that well-being Career certainly plays a role, mm, but right. also there's financial well-being, there's physical well-being, and there's emotional well-being. Right. So if you think about career well-being, 
financial well-being, physical well-being, emotional well-being, it all plays as a system. Right. And so um, working within that system is really, really important. Mm. And too often what happens is we see the world as these desperate modules, um, and, but when we see them as being connected, right. um, it makes more sense. And so when we're talking with people about you know how to find that sweet spot you know one of the first items that i have a conversation with is look at the culture of the place you're going right <laughs> right look at the culture if the people you're interviewing with can't answer a simple question tell me about your culture mm. okay it might be a little bit of a red flag right right might be a little bit of because everybody has one yes every organization has a culture whether you like it or not yeah and that culture is perfectly aligned to get whatever results they're getting yeah. Right. So if you can ask someone that you're interviewing with, tell me about the culture. Now, they're going to give you one or two answers. The <laughs> okay, first answer yes. is, man, the culture around here is really fun. We play foosball uh -huh. and we have a ping pong table yep. and, and we have ice cream Tuesdays. And <laughs> right. while that's not bad, right. it's not all of culture. Yes, that's right? definitely true. Right. Like, how do you work, actually? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And so they should be able to talk about that aspect of it yeah that's and so if when you're hearing if they can tell you aspects of the culture that fulfill every area of well-being mm, yeah okay now you're on track to a place that is probably going to be more healthy than not yes. so in other words hey look we we have a developmental program in our organization that you know our culture is all about developing our people career yes um, hey we really talk about you know the financial health of our team members and right. while while pay is competitive it's so much more than that yes yeah physical health hey you know we have this great um, health benefit but we also right. have uh, you know a gym or we have uh, you know, walking challenges or whatever the case may be. Right. And then emotional, uh, you know, hey, we have teams, we have ERGs, we have all of these um, opportunities to come together to create an emotional well-being. Yeah. If they're able to answer questions that help you tick the box on those categories, yeah. you probably have some place that is worth taking a peek into. Right. Right? Now, a lot of people will tell you, and I asked my... Um, my EA on the way over on the drive over here who is just really brilliant um, you know what's really important to you and uh, she said look I got to be passionate about what yeah. I do I got to be passionate about what Absolutely. I do um, and I would completely agree with that right um, there has to be a level of passion yes there is a difference though between passion and purpose. Right, that's true. So you don't always feel good about it, but if you have that purpose. Yes. Yeah. So the purpose gets close to my why, my, mm -hmm. my, um, you know, this is what is, gives significance to me, that why. Absolutely. And the passion is the energy. Right. <laughs> I can be really passionate about something, but if it doesn't fit my why. Right then I could run out of energy. Yes, I've seen that. I was going to say, I've seen that in some of my friends where yeah. that can so easily happen. So. so it's, can you find both, mm. right? Passion will run you for a while, um, and it's super important. Yes, that's true. But you also want to have some place that really aligns around, um, you know, your why. Right. And, you know, if that's with a financial organization that helps people's lives be better, hey, look, Man, my purpose in life is to help people be better. Yep. I can get really behind that. Yes. And then now and that even energy, when your energy is low. Yes. You can that kinda, gets you yeah. up. That's exactly right. Yeah. There's an interesting study that came out of UCLA that said that when they looked at teams, uh, people that only had passion ran really, really super hard. Really? Um, but the turnover was actually higher for that group. Um, compared to the group that had purpose and passion. Really? So if purpose was high, and even if passion was low, right. the purpose high group actually had lower turnover really? than, the, than the group that had only, per, uh, only passion but low purpose. So if you're able to have both, sweet spot. That's, that's the perfect thing. That's okay. it. Well, yeah. that's so good for our members to know as they're kind of seeking jobs to find those two things when they're, they're seeking a yes. new job. Check the culture. They have one. Can they articulate it? Yeah. If they absolutely. can't, then it could be a little Probably wonky. Probably not working right? on it. <laughs> that's exactly right. And then, does it fit my why? And can I have some energy around that? Those yeah. are some key 
key items to look That's at. That's a great checklist. I'll, I'll definitely, I was going to say, think about that in the future. So, um, well, I was going to say, moving on to our next, I really wanted to just kind of transition to talking about your book. Some of the things you were saying um, kind of remind me of the character you wrote in the do-over, uh, kind of the s struggles that she was having. And so mm. I actually was wondering if you could kind of explain one concept I found really interesting was kind of this three-step uh, process for the stories that yep. we tell ourselves. So I was wondering if you could kind of explain, we'll kind of go through one by one, but the sync up story. So what is that all about? Can you explain to our members what that means yeah. and um, kind of how we can implement that into our daily purpose? Uh, culture is always working around us and culture starts with stories. Right. Right. And so one of the stories that we interact with is uh, what I refer to as the sync up story. The sync up story is a system, a process, or a policy that we interact with on a daily basis. Now, right. in an organization, that's pretty easy, right? Right. Time off policy, uh, you know, calendars or yeah. systems, emails, things yep. like that. In our personal life, um, those can be something as simple as the traditions that we have sure. or um, even our own agendas. Yeah. Um, so the agenda, man, that transcend, transcends, um, you know, my personal life, my professional right. life. We always have agendas, yes, right? Absolutely. We walk in the room, we had an agenda today for this. Um, the agenda is broken down like this, like this, like this. Right. A sync up story is anything that runs in the background mm. um, that is constantly telling the story even when um, I may not be looking or fully engaged, yeah. right? Okay. Uh, so for instance, um, uh, your calendar, for example. Yeah. Your calendar is a sync up story and it's running in the background. Yep. You filled your calendar and it's got all these dates on it. Right. And there's some white space. Yeah. But if I worked with you, and I looked at your calendar to try to get on a meeting with you. Yeah. Um, and there's no white space on that calendar. Yeah. That calendar tells me a story. Absolutely. Right. You're too busy <laughs> to meet with me. Yes. Right. And so therefore, I could walk away with um, a story that may not be true. Really? Right. Yeah. It may not be true because right. your thought may be, hey, look, I know that I have a lot on my calendar, but man, if it's important, you can come in and yeah. I'll lose something. Right. But if I only look at that story, mm. the calendar, I may get the wrong interpretation. Right. That's, that's exactly right. That makes sense. Often we have, um, and even other types of systems, like old traditions, well, the way I've always done it this way, um, old tapes that we play in the back of our head. Right. Um, those stories can slow us down. Mm. They, can tell old, they can tell old stories. Um, as we go through life, we're constantly interacting with all of these stories. And the sync up story is certainly one. Right. This one is really challenging because it runs in the background. Yeah, yeah it's we're not running, aware of it. That's exactly right. So other systems, your email, your social media, these are all sync up stories. Hmm. They run in the background um, and they're constantly telling stories. Mm -hmm. And we're, right. we're listening to those stories. Those stories are informing how we think, yeah, absolutely. how we feel, which ultimately drives what we do. Yes, and the company culture as well, and that's kind of I love that part. And when you said the the story of you know I don't have time for you, I'm like you know yep. that brilliant jerk <laughs> that was the the kind of antagonist in the yes. story that I think um, those stories can really impact a work culture and um, very just, quickly, right? And even yeah. just the way we uh, present ourselves to to others and the way we pre yeah. So I, I love that point. I thought that was really yeah. good. So the most common sync up story that we all share is the agenda. Okay, um, when we walk in the room people have an agenda. Yeah. Sometimes it's a hidden agenda. Right. Sometimes it's very transparent. Right. But everybody has an agenda. Yeah. Formal agendas, say like for meetings, mm -hmm. um, that's a very common agenda. Let's say that an organization has three results. We have to achieve these three results. But if I have a meeting with you every week and the agenda only has one item on it, yeah. then all of a sudden, that tells me a that's story. That's the only thing that's important. That's right. exactly right. Absolutely. That's exactly right. Being aware of our agendas, I think, is, is a huge, huge step to take kind of personal awareness. That's right. You, we have agendas personally, professionally, and mm. organizationally. And yeah. being aware of those stories yeah. that our agenda tells 
is very important. Man, that is so insightful. Yeah, thanks for, for sharing about the, the sync up story. And I was gonna say, I would love to also hear about the show up story. I remember in my class, you mentioned a story of, you know, maybe you showing up early to the Zoom call with yeah. uh, not in your pajamas and having your, your hair fixed can tell a story um, about who you are and kind of what you're doing. So I was gonna say, yeah, would you mind yeah. sharing about the, the show up story and how, how can know, we as people, employees and just going in our jobs better show up? Um, this is a crazy story. Um, so in a virtual environment, how about this? Camera on, camera off. Right, yeah. That tells a story. Totally. Right? I mean, we don't even know what's going on on the other side of the camera off. Yeah. But when that camera's off, we know they're there, but it's telling some kind of story. Right. Or, uh, you know, even camera's on and everybody's on this virtual environment. We're all watching and then all of a sudden everybody's head dips. And you can tell they're doing oh, totally. multi-triple tasking, right? <laughs> that We've tells all done us, it. <laughs> I know it. Yeah. That, that tells a story. Right. Being present when you're present, mm. that tells a story. Yep. Um, and here's what's crazy about the show up story. You don't even need to use words. Right. There's actually some research out there that's referred to as mood contagion. Mm, um, interesting. And mood contagion is I can come into the room in a mood. Yep. <laughs> and immediately our mind goes to bad mood. Right, of right? course. And depending on my rank or my tenure, my position mm. of the other individuals with, within that room, if I'm in a bad mood, right, without saying very many words, I can impact the mood of I've, everyone else in that room. Absolutely, yeah. That's something you don't even think about, I'm sure, but it's so true. But the old adage, smile in the world smiles with you, also is true, <laughs> right? right? If, I'm in a, if I'm in a good mood, then that mood actually tells everyone else a story, right? and it can lift a room yep. as quickly as it can take a room down. We tell stories by our presence just by showing up, mm -hmm. sometimes it's literally, hey, you made it to the meeting on time. Thank yeah. you. That tells the story. <laughs> right. But if I'm late 15 minutes every single day, yeah, do you ever have any professors in school that was late what? to class? Never. Never, never happened. Never. Yeah. Yeah. The <laughs> and, but, you know, it tells, it tells a story. And in, in the professional world, you know, if somebody is constantly late, mm. their lack of presence yeah. tells a story. Absolutely. So yeah. we're constantly telling stories just by our presence mm. and just by showing up in the room, we're telling someone's story. Here's yeah. what's crazy. I can, I can, you know, the other story is the speak up story. I, I right? knew you knew this was coming. Right. This is I, my the third other story question. Is the speak up story. <laughs> and so I could tell you all day long, um, I'm really responsible. I'm really responsible. I'm sure. really responsible. But if I don't show up, yeah. then that story undermines Mm, that's true. Story. Yeah, they all kind of affect each other. They do, and they have to be, they have to be aligned. Okay. Right. Yeah. The speak up story, often as you know, as an author, you know, you would immediately think words are really important, and I love words. Even though I'm <laughs> dyslexic, I I love words. Oh, really? I have a oh, that's, that's love a, hate relationship yeah. with words. Don't right? we all? <laughs> I know. Um, but here's what's really interesting about the speak up story. It's the words are a secondary character. Mm. You know, last year in 2021, Google said that we sent globally 389 billion email oh, per day. My gosh, that is so many. That's email. That's just not text messages or Yammer or um, WhatsApp, you know, all WhatsApp the and all, yes. the, all the things, right? That doesn't include that. That's just email. Wow. So uh, think about this for a second. If we're sending that many words, what's missing from those words? Well, what, what research is really clear in telling us is that in the speak up story, the actual leading character in that story is the tonality of those words. Really, it's how the interesting. the emotion of those words. Man, okay. Because uh, take, your, take your text messages, for example. Yes. You can probably recall without even looking at your phone, what was the last emoji you sent to a friend or family oh, member? Probably the laughing, crying one. That's my go-to. Laughing, crying. Yeah. Everybody I'm, has I'm, a go-to. I'm, I'm a basic person like that, you know, yep. classic. <laughs> everybody has, you know, the face plant is one of mine. Oh, that's a good uh, one. <laughs> but everybody has one or two. It is, it is not by accident that our phones have over 3,000 options yeah. for emojis. I love that, yeah. And there's a reason why. Right. Because I can send you a text message with two words, thank you, mm -hmm. and the heart emoji, and instantly you know the sincerity of those two words. Yeah, absolutely. It does communicate something. I can send you the same two words, thank you, and the poop emoji, and it changes everything. 
<laughs> Everything right. you say, same two words. Right. But the tone and the emotion behind those two words. Yep. Here's 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 why this is important. We type a lot of words. Matter right. of fact, I made this comment in a class I was lecturing to uh, just recently. I believe there is a group of students in school currently mm. that will hit the marketplace in the future that will actually have the ability to actually type more words than they speak during the course of the day. Wow. Yeah. I think that's coming. And especially with the remote work now, I could see that being yes. just a huge, um, a huge thing.